Eloise Jarvis McGraw's children's novel, The Moore Child, published in 1996, weaves the captivating tale of Mockle, a unique being, caught between two worlds as a half-human and half-folk girl. Expelled from the enchanted fake community that resides beneath the sprawling moors, Mockle must adapt to life as a human child, grappling with her sense of isolation and striving to craft her individual identity. This heartfelt work is dedicated by McGraw to all children who have ever felt different and earned the prestigious Newbery Honor Award in 1997. Mockle belongs to the ethereal moor folk, residing beneath the expanse of the moors, a realm where human and folk boundaries blur. Within this enigmatic society, no youngling knows their own mother, and time flows uniquely within the mound, their dwelling place, devoid of the confines of yesterday or tomorrow. As they mature, younglings transition from the nursery to the schooling house, where they master their assigned tasks, be it gathering tufts of wool, cobwebs, or wild fruits, or indulging in playful pranks on humans, such as entangling horse manies. One fateful day, during an outing with the younglings and their guide, Petitiskin, the group crosses paths with a human. While all except Makla deftly shift shapes or vanish to evade detection, she finds herself exposed, and the shepherd captures her. Employing her wits, Makla manages to outsmart her captor and break free. However, Petitiskin escorts her back to the mound, where she faces an audience with the prince. The prince discerns that Mokkel is an exceptional case, a hybrid, born of a folk woman and a human fisherman lured into the mound. He recognizes her as neither one thing nor yet quite t'other. Pity, but there tis. Mokkel's incapability to transform or disappear places the folk community in jeopardy, prompting the prince to conclude that half-humans rarely find their place amongst the folk. Filled with anger and trepidation, Mokkel grapples with the uncertain fate that awaits her among humans. However, the prince's decision is unwavering, leading the folk to seize a human infant to serve as their captive while substituting Mokkel in her stead. In the village of Yano the blacksmith and his wife and Wara, perplexity shrouds their household as their once content newborn is now consumed by ceaseless cries and wails. Old Bess, and Wara's mother, and the village's wise woman, harbor suspicions that the infant, named Soski, might be a changeling. Her doubts arise from Soski's peculiar aversion to the metallic scent lingering around Yano, her father, and the soothing effect of spoonfuls of honey. However, when Old Bess voices her concerns to Yano and Anwara, they steadfastly refuse to heed her warnings. Meanwhile, young Soski's cries reverberate, expressing the profound and lonely anger stemming from her exile from all that was once familiar and understood, the realm of the folk she once inhabited. As Soski grows, her memories of her former life as Mokkel gradually fade into elusive dream pictures, most vivid when she wanders the moors. Soski stands apart from the other village children, unable to comprehend the allure of their games or the companionship they offer. Her struggle to grasp human emotions is mirrored in her physical appearance, brownish skin, a delicate wisp of hair, chameleon-like eyes, and disproportionately long hands and feet. Her boundless energy resists conformity to Yano and Anwar's rules and village norms, leaving her feeling as though she's living in fetters. Soski's distinctiveness only deepens the rift with her peers, who fear her and treat her as an outcast. They subject her to taunts, name-calling, and even physical aggression, subjecting her to daily pinpricks of malice. Yet amidst the isolation, Soski discovers solace in her friendship with Tam, an orphaned goatherd of her own age, equally estranged from the village's fold. Tam resides with Brumman, a drunken shepherd, and together, Tam and Soski embark on explorations of the moors. Soski, ever accompanied by her bagpipes, plays haunting melodies for her newfound companion. These excursions occasionally grant Soski fleeting glimpses of the folk, rekindling memories of her former existence. In this turbulent journey, Soski also forms a profound bond with Old Bess, who, despite her initial apprehensions, grows to care deeply for the young girl. Old Bess takes on the role of a mentor, teaching Soski the art of reading and nurturing her intellectual growth. When a troop of gypsies arrives in the village, Soski yearns to participate in their lively ring dance alongside the other village children. However, her hopeful attempts result in a merciless onslaught, leaving her battered and bruised. In the aftermath of the gypsies' departure, the village children fall victim to a mysterious illness, marked by throbbing headaches and soaring fevers. Amidst this strange affliction, a peculiar observation takes hold, Soski remains the sole child untouched by the sickness. 
whispers among the villagers cast suspicions upon her, alleging that her presence has brought a curse upon their offspring. Despite old Bess's valiant defense of Soski, attributing the illness to a visiting gypsy boy, the villagers remain unconvinced. As Soski's memories return in full force during an encounter with more of the folk, she begins to embrace her dual heritage. She confides in old Bess, outlining her plans to disclose the truth to Yano and Anwara before departing the village. Stricken by misery and anger, Soski grapples with an acute sense of not belonging anywhere. On her way home, Soski is suddenly confronted by an enraged mob of villagers wielding iron implements, salt, and Rowan, a nightmarish ordeal. In the nick of time, Yano intervenes, rescuing Soski from imminent danger. That very night, Soski vanishes, leaving behind a solemn vow to liberate Yano and Anwara's human child from her servitude within the mound. Her quest leads her to her human father, Fergil, who, despite his willingness, cannot provide the assistance she needs. Joined by Tam and Tinkwa, one of the folk, they embark on a daring mission into the heart of the mound. As they journey deeper, Tam succumbs to the enchanting wonders and beauty surrounding them. Yet, Soski employs a magical ointment that unveils the truth hidden beneath these beguiling illusions. Within the mound's mystical depths, they locate the enchanted child and successfully smuggle her to safety. Tam ensures the girl's well-being by entrusting her to old Bess's care, after which he and Soski depart Torskal for good. Soski, convinced of her affinity with Tam, recognizes his shared sense of rootlessness, a trait that seems to suit them both. Gradually, the villagers begin to forget Soski, as Yano and Anwarik dote on their beloved daughter, Leo Ran, who thrives under their loving care. Yet, fleeting memories of a mysterious figure with a wispy mane of pale hair and the haunting melody of bagpipes linger on, like distant echoes of a bygone moor. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.